Good evening. Welcome to Granada Reports. First, today marks two years since the start of the first COVID lockdown. Almost 23,000 people in the northwest have died with COVID, making it the worst affected region in the country. Earlier, people gathered at Liverpool's Anglican Cathedral for prayers and messages for lost loved ones went on display in Manchester city centre. But we are being reminded COVID hasn't gone away. Sarah Rogers reports from Blackburn. So you're here today for your fourth That's vaccine. Right, yeah. A fourth jab, not something that many people would have predicted two years ago when life completely changed. On this day in 2020, the region locked down. Today, legal restrictions are non-existent, with the COVID-19 vaccination programme playing a huge part. When you get to a certain age, you've got to, you've got to keep well. Well, this week sees the start of the spring booster programme for the over 75s and vulnerable. There was a steady stream of people getting their fourth jab at this centre in Blackburn. Can you believe where we are now? No, no. I, I mean, don't think we would have been here without the vaccines. I think they needed it. Yeah. But it's... When you're getting older, you, you appreciate your life a lot, a lot more, obviously. At this age, your holidays are taken off you and the percentage of your life that's left is, you know, you got to make the most of it after that. It's really worth the effort yeah, to yeah. come and have the job. Yeah. And, if you, and if you need a fifth one, will you be back? Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and with the Easter break looming, newcomers are welcomed. It's my first holiday in a while, and um, I didn't want to get the vaccines done at first, but I had to get it done, I had no choice, and hopefully more people, I'm Gary, and everyone will be safe. But with rules relaxing on COVID across the world, can we keep it up? I, I think that's a real worry. Um, there is fatigue and there is um, kind of complacency about the power of vaccines. But coronaviruses are a bit different. There's a reason why you get a common cold every year, but you don't get chickenpox every year if you've had it before. What are the issues? Because if people are vaccinated, the variants are milder, people aren't getting that ill. We've been told by the government we've just got to learn to live with this now. So I'm, I'm not sure it's a milder form. I think what we're observing is fewer admissions in a vaccinated population. So the vaccine works, it lets us experience a milder disease rather than a really dangerous disease. So we do need to keep on top of the vaccination level in the country. Today, the Chief Medical Officer, Chris Whitty, warned of increases in hospital admissions over the next fortnight, which will put more pressure on the stretched NHS. Well, even just a few months ago, it'd be difficult to imagine just how far COVID would fade into the background for many people as other huge world events come to the fore. But health bosses here say that cases are rising, the pandemic isn't over, and we need to be mindful of that. In the last week, we've seen over 1,700 new cases, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it was already a high number of cases to start with. And so we are seeing an escalating picture. Almost 23,000 people in the region have died with COVID. Today they were honoured at a vigil in Manchester city centre. But unlike two years ago, people can now come together, hug, comfort one another, as hopefully we leave the worst behind. Sarah Rogers, ITV News. In other news, the Prime Minister's told the House of Commons action will be taken against P&O after it sacked 800 staff. Another protest was held at the Port of Liverpool this morning after P&O brought cheaper agency workers in. The union wants the company to reinstate all the workers. We will not sit by, uh, Mr Speaker, because, uh, because under Section 194 of the Trades Union and Labour Relations Act, of 1992. It looks to me, Mr Speaker, as though the company concerned has broken the law and we will be taking action. Well, meanwhile, the chief executive of P&O has apologised for the impact of the decision, but said it was the only way to save the business. Two men have been arrested on suspicion of the murder of a woman in Warrington 31 years ago. Veronica Anderson, who was 42, was found dead in her car in August 1991. The men aged 70 and 61 remain in custody. A 23-year-old man's in hospital with life-changing injuries after a drive-by shooting on the Wirral. He was shot several times on Hool Road in Woodchurch last night. Merseyside police say it was a targeted attack. 
Now, the Chancellor has unveiled his spring statement, which includes fuel duty being cut, the amount you need to earn before paying national insurance will rise, and the household support fund from councils has been doubled. So, is it enough to calm people's fears over the rising cost of living? Anne O'Connor reports from Winsford. They were spending spare cash on pub lunches in Winsford when the Chancellor spoke as new figures showed disposable income will fall faster this year than any since the 1950s. At the mobile pantry in Liverpool, people who can't afford to buy food, let alone pay for it to be cooked and served by someone else. The Chancellor knows they'll all be hit by spiralling energy and fuel costs. Today, I can announce for only the second time in 20 years, fuel duty will be cut. Yeah. Not by one, not even by two, but by five pence per litre. Yeah. The biggest cut to all fuel duty rates ever. It's not enough. It is not enough. At the Queen's Arms in Winsford, they're not impressed. It costs so much to go to work, to earn a living, to survive. And the fact is, he's hitting us hard. You know, I know... You can cut corners, but you go to work to have a better standard of life and have something a bit more, but you're not getting that more, you're getting it all taken off you. Tracy's friend Vivian has been treated for cancer and worrying about the cost of petrol to get to her appointments. I've been having radiotherapy at Mathersfield. I had to go for 15 days. And uh, my daughter was taking me. I don't know how much petrol it cost her, but it must have been... A lot, you know. The Chancellor announced a rise in the threshold for national insurance and a doubling in the household support fund. Which sounds amazing, but this local authority, Cheshire West, has lost half a billion since 2010. So that's a billion across the entire country. It doesn't go anywhere near enough. Driving instructor Bill Cummings is back on the road in Winsford after lockdown restrictions closed his business. He believes the Chancellor's done what he could. Save me maybe £2, £2.50 a week. So nothing dramatic, but obviously anything is better than nothing. But Manchester's Metro Mayor says the measures do nothing for the people who don't drive and rely on benefits. There are more of those households in the North West. Take those two factors and put them together and you consider what the Chancellor has announced. You can't come to the conclusion, anything other than the conclusion, that this is a package that um, won't close regional inequality and possibly could see it widening. And for Zachary this morning, up to 120 people were expected at the fans supporting food banks mobile pantry on Merseyside, where 10 items cost £3.50. These are people who are struggling to make ends meet. These will be people who are struggling to pay a rent or a mortgage. It'll be people who are struggling to put the heating on of an evening and keep themselves out warm. Organisers want to see a day when it will no longer be needed. But that day is not in sight. Anne O'Connor, ITV News. On to football now. Manchester City's Raheem Sterling had a royal teammate as he took to the pitch in Jamaica. Prince William joined him along with some young footballers as part of his tour of the Caribbean. Sterling is in Jamaica to work with his foundation that helps disadvantaged youngsters after being given special permission to go by England's manager, Gareth Southgate. I spoke to Gareth and you know, Gareth said how you know, a privilege and an honour it was and you know, it, that's exactly what it is. Uh, I, I have the opportunity to come back here to Jamaica, which at any given moment I'm, I always try to do. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm not very minute. And finally, an endangered species of deer has been pictured for the first time at Chester Zoo. Lyra is a Philippine spotted deer that's become extinct in parts of her home country due to hunting. She's part of a conservation breeding programme at the zoo. Now for a look at the weather, here's John. Oh, I love a hot shower and a cold day, me. And a minute shorter than usual. What a legend. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. 
Hello again. Well, what a gorgeous sunrise it was this morning down here at New Brighton. Isn't that beautiful? Now, overnight tonight, all is quiet. It's going to stay dry with extended cloud breaks. We can expect a little mistiness to form, maybe one or two fog patches in low-lying areas by the end of tonight. And uh, low temperatures, well, two or three Celsius there in Cheshire. There's this morning sunrise again, this time at Preston. Isn't that amazing? Tomorrow the sun's up at five past six, setting again half past six tomorrow evening. So again tomorrow morning a little bit of mistiness to start with that will soon disappear. Lots of sunshine to come. A little bit of patchy cloud up towards the Pennines might just give an isolated shower but essentially it's a dry day and again temperatures above average at around 16 or 17 Celsius and a fine night to come again tomorrow night. So into Friday we've still got that high pressure on the weather chart. We've still got a lot of dry and fine weather with plenty of sunshine and light winds and again top temperatures temperatures at 16 Celsius. Does the fine weather continue into the weekend? It certainly does. Good night. United Utilities sponsors ITV Granada Weather. Oh, hello. Gary towel. Thanks very much, John. We will be back in Good Morning Britain from 6. Until then, good night.